If you've been on Reddit before in your life, you might have heard the phrase, League of Legends is a turn-based game. But is that even true? Like, what does it mean? What defines a turn? And why should you even care? So, hey, I'm Bach. I'm an anthropologist and aspiring League of Legends coach with the goal to make complex or nuanced topics as relatable and accessible as possible. If there's anything you want me to cover in a future video, just let me know down in the comments. So let's hop into it. All right, so let's talk about turns. Um, I'm going to try to keep this a little conversational. I just feel like the, crypt, the scripted feel just doesn't doesn't quite fit my personality. Um, but when we talk about turns, what does this mean, right? Because I'm sure we're all in game at some point and we're like, wait a minute, I'm clicking at the same time my enemy's clicking. This isn't turn-based, this is real time. Um, we are getting a little abstract here. So when we refer to turns, we're actually referring to um, minion waves or minion waves plays heavily into this. So the concept here I want to illustrate is, imagine we are Ari in this scenario and we're playing into Syndra. And in this matchup, minion waves come, right? They spawn, I think, I think we all... We're all on the same page so far and they meet in the middle of the lane now what happens in this scenario if i'm ari and i push my entire minion wave instantly before Syndra has a chance to even you know touch the minions like let's say she was late for base or you know she has like lower hp she can't really walk up and contest but we clear the wave first and we get a push what happens here right okay so step one minion wave goes in now what in essence ari has just generated herself a turn and the whole point of this is ari can now choose to do any action she wants and no matter what action she takes, she doesn't technically lose anything in this like specific scenario. Now, depending on the game state, depending on other stuff going around on the map, she could definitely lose something by making a poor decision. But for the sake of this example, like let's say Ari right now wants to go ward, or she wants to roam top lane, or she wants to invade the wolf camp, or she wants to reset, or she wants to dive the center, or she wants to AFK here, or she wants to do dragon or do grubs. Any of these things that are happening right now, she can do, and she will not lose anything because she has pushed her minion wave, meaning wherever she goes, Lysandra, 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 I'm French now, has to make a decision. Am I going to move now and forfeit the minion wave under my tower, or am I going to spend the time, the mana, the cooldowns to clear this minion wave and then move later? Either way, Ari gets to do what she wants first. She gets to make the proactive decision on the map. And Lysandra, I did it again, Lysandra has to respond to this decision. So when I have a turn, that's like, that's great. Like you're in the driver's seat, you're in, you're in power. This is why people sometimes say like proactive versus reactive gaming. But okay, that's just in one simplified instance of this. Let's scale this up to the next level. And to do that, we're going to talk about a concept called rounds. If you watched my other video where I talked about how to use your rounds or we did a collegiate level VOD review in the Diamond Through Masters level, we go a little bit more in depth on plans for our rounds. So we're going to compare this to Valorant and we're going to look at this. So Valorant is really easy to view in rounds because the game's already broken up in rounds for you. You've got round one, it's your pistol round. Round two, if you win, that's your like light buy round. Sometimes you, if you lose, you force up, but it's very cleanly divided. All right. At the beginning of the round, you're in your base and then you have a plan for the round, right? Okay, our plan for this round might be go C or go B or split A. And you might be saying, Bach, none of this has to do with League of Legends. It all depends on how you view it. So we're going to go a little bit more into the example. For this round, we're going to be playing under the assumption that the goal is to do a hit on a bomb site. So sequence one, here we are. We're going to move up. Everyone has something to do in the, in the sequence, right? We're going to take space. We're going to drop our utility, use our abilities, use our cooldowns. Okay. Taking more space, taking more space. And now look at this. We've assumed control of the site. Everyone's in position. And we now own the bomb site. We can plant the bomb and, or sorry, the spike. We're not playing CSGO here. And we're in a good spot to potentially win the round. Now, the same thing can be done with League of Legends. Let's do a little comparison here. In Valorant, there are different roles, right? There is like your initiator. These are here to provide a lot of utility, like sm like uh, flashes or stuns, your duelists, which are there to create space for the rest of your team, but maybe also have like a flash or some sort of movement ability. There's your sentinels who provide utility and healing, right? There's your controllers who drop smokes. The same thing can be true in League of Legends. Your controllers who are like in charge of controlling vision, that might be your support characters, your duelists who are there to create space in like a weird way. These might be your frontliners, right? The point here is everyone has a goal for the round. And because we have a clear goal for the round, we all know what to do with our individual kits. So how does that relate to anything we just talked about? Well, when we have the chance now to take a turn, going back to our initial example, here I'm Ari. I want to push this wave and then we're stuck at the same part we were before, right? We have all these hypothetical things we could do, but depending on what the goal is for the team for the round, that will inform what Ari should do with her turn. So let's say we're playing for, you know, dragon here. 
there's a couple things that Ari could potentially do that are really good for her team. And there's a couple things that she probably shouldn't do. If we need Ari here for the objective and she has a turn, she should probably not use all her mana and HP and cooldowns trying to kill the Syndra. She should probably not roam topside. Depending on how close to when Dragon spawns, she should also probably not reset. What she could do instead, though, is after she pushes the wave, she could fog downwards and help get vision or move and to actually do damage to the dragon if we need her. Maybe we have like an Ivern jungle and our bot lane can't move. Something, right? She could potentially even move bot lane to free up our bot lane so we can do dragon together. There's a couple of things she could do, and it all results with using her turn in a way that is productive for the outcome of the round. And that's pretty much it. You can get more complicated, you can add more characters, you can add more nuance, but at the end of the day, a round starts from when we leave the base as a team, we have a goal, play for dragon. Now, every time we get a round, or sorry, every time we get a turn in that round, we're thinking, how can we use that turn for the betterment of the round? Am I, and you might not have an answer every single turn. Sometimes you might just be like, we have everything we need to play for this dragon, so I can do other things, and that's wonderful, and that's great. But step one is having that idea and making it work uh, for you and putting some intention in your actions. So I want to show you a real short clip, less than 30 seconds long of something like this happening. So here we are. It's a collegiate varsity team playing a match and Varus and Leona are going to get pushed bot lane and Dragon is going to be up. When they get pushed bot lane in this matchup, they're going to be able to move. So they have a turn right now. Now, theoretically, they could do anything right now, right? They could walk up into the jungle. They could walk into their own tri brush. They could sit in lane and look for a trap play on the Ashen Brom as the next wave comes. They could reset, but because the play is dragon, they're using their turn to result in the outcome of the team getting dragon. And it's that easy, right? But I feel like it's really intuitive for a lot of players, but putting like that intention behind it is what helps the most.